So I remember when Mark was actually coming to the property, he got on the phone with me, he's like, hey, you're not gonna believe what happened. There's a bomb in the garage. And I was like, what? You know, all the notice of violations, it was like bigger than Bobby Brown's rap sheet. I mean, it was like massive, massive changes. Uh, you guys see the pictures from before to what you see now, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, it's just a whole new property. Uh, when I got it from you, it was a left vacant for two years. I cannot allow someone to live in any of my properties if it's a property I would not live in. There's no way in hell. This property was a bomb, guys. If you ever want to come with bomb deals, approach me. I, I get all the bomb deals. What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here and in today's video we've got a really interesting subject matter with a lot of crazy real estate stories. So if you love crazy real estate stories, this video... What, what, no, hey guys, eyes up here, eyes up here. I know those are some amazing socks. If you guys are interested in literally getting me on your socks, if that's your thing, we've got it now through Teespring, so check out right below this video. You'll see the Teespring links. If you guys wanna grab Matt McKeever on your socks, that's a thing now, so feel free to go do that. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a deal that involves break-ins, a bomb, and a yeah, that's all in today's video and more. We're actually catching up with uh, Mark Smith, the 72 real estate investor and Shahir from my wholesale team. If you don't remember part one, they walked you through a deal that Shahir wholesaled to Mark. In today's video, we catch up and find out how things are going. I mean, if there's break-ins, bombs, I'm gonna guess there's some pretty interesting stories in this one, but I think we're also gonna share some numbers with you too for the numbers nerds. So anyways, let's dive in to today's video. Hey guys, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. My name is Shahir Shahid. I'm with Mark Smith, the 72 real estate investor over here. And for those who don't know me, I'm actually a mentee of Matt McKeever. I'm actually a wholesaler out of London, Ontario. I actually live with Matt and uh, I actually assigned this deal, the property that we're currently in, to my man Mark Smith over here last year. This was my first wholesale deal and he's finally finished the entire project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go the ins and outs, talk about all the turbulences and yeah. what did work, what didn't work. There were a lot of uh, different experiences like a bomb in the garage, people breaking in, in the basement. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna be breaking everything down with the rental costs and everything, so guys, Drop down in the comments below whatever your questions are because I'm going to be replying to them as well. And yeah, guys, that's it. Let's go through the property. Let's, let's do this. So out here, I mean, we got some work to do. I mean, when we when I first got this property, there was, uh, I call it the, you know, all the notice of violations. It was like bigger than Bobby Brown's rap sheet. I mean, it was like, yay high. Mm -hmm. And some of them were, we had to fix some of the panels on the deck and that kind of stuff. That's what we're going to take care of. Um, really out here, it's more of a cleanup. We decided to keep these windows in, and the reason we did that is this is a busy street, but you can see how it dampens that sound, and also allows me to really target uh, my uh, some of my new tenants that are coming in that are smokers or maybe cannabis smokers and that kind of stuff, so they don't have to worry about that. I'm okay if they're smoking as long as they don't do it in the house. Um, so in here, we changed the lighting uh, to LED lighting, Electrical was a big issue here. In fact, we actually found the original electrical in here. It had actually been uh, chewed up by squirrels. Um, wow. So it was a, a fire risk. And sure enough, we kept it open and they got those, uh, those guys got in there again. So you can see from that, so we have to fix that, seal it up and off we go. But other than that, just more of a cleanup here. Change some of the boards here, remove the trash, and uh, we're good to go. As you enter in here. Wow. Yeah, some massive, wow. massive changes. Uh, I mean, when you guys see the pictures from before to what you see now, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, it's just a whole new property. Uh, when I got it from you, it was a left vacant for two years. Um, there was mold in the basement. It was vacant in that during the winter months, all the piping um, actually had sliced in half because there was no heat in the house. But yeah, we had to do a complete, you know, remodel of how this was gonna look. It smelled like yeah, that was the worst thing. I feel like when I when I first walked into the property, I remember that there was just so many things going on, especially with the floor too. It was creaking, so I'm surprised. Did you take out the? Floor? Yeah. So what we had here, we, it was actually full of laminate, and it smelled like it was all cat piss, right? So, yeah. and I'm a firm believer for house smells like cat piss. You can fix that, mm -hmm. and you can always negotiate better with that. So we just ripped up all the flooring, and to our surprise, our plan was to do vinyl plank. But when we ripped up the floor, we actually found the original hardwood floors. So one of my things is um, in any property, in these 
called the vintage style properties, my oldest home and my portfolio being built in 1882, is to maintain the character of the home. Mm -hmm. There's the, if these walls could uh, tell us the stories, right? Um, so, so essentially what we did was we just basically lifted all the laminate out and just stained the floor. And uh, the nice thing is it still has the small creaks and that kind of stuff, but it, it, it's, the, it's the character of the home. Mm -hmm. Right, like, yeah. like even the baseboards, we kept the baseboards. I mean, it just, again, those were original. So anytime you can keep original, uh, in my opinion, it, it's, it's fantastic, not just from a cost savings, but if you're trying to maintain that character of that property, because um, you do um, bring in a niche type of tenant as well that has an appreciation for that. Did you also put the crown crown molding we on did. top? Yeah, we did crown molding. Crown molding wasn't there before. And the reason we did crown molding, um, so we went with LED lights across, um, again, pot lights. And then for the electrical that we had to do, because we found knob and tube in here. So knob and tube, I mean, you know, should have been expected. Uh, found knob and tube in here. So because of that, we actually had to run new wiring. And so to cover that wiring, we put the crown molding to expose that. So it's just a, a, a less expensive way or more economical way of, of getting the wiring around. Wow, no, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. I'm glad to see that they're new outlets. So that means you probably redid all the electrical wiring. You did the whole electrical? With the whole home. Whole home. Every exactly. wire. Yeah. Other things that we've done here um, is, uh, so a lot of people in the videos may look at the, the, the uh, registers here. So these aren't base heaters. Yeah. Okay, these are, this is actually a new boiler system that we installed in the house. There was a boiler system here already, so we removed it, it wasn't functioning, um, so we replaced that. So that, although it looks like radiant heaters, they're actually, it's actually powered by water um, and gas. And then with that, you'll see in the basement, it's the same setup that also does the hot water on demand for uh, energy efficiency, so there's no hot water tank. Wow, no, that's amazing. So we made some, that, was, that wasn't cheap, that was about 13,500. Okay, so yeah, here this is, yeah, we've got storage. These old homes, they don't have storage, right? So we had to really look at this space to see what we can do here and maximize because there used to be a wall went across mm -hmm. here, okay? And you had a narrow opening here and then you had the kitchen, okay? So this was almost like a separate room, probably an old dining area or what have you. And then as you come through the kitchen, you had this maze of a stairway to get in, but it was like maybe fit for a six-year-old child to get in, to get up to the attic, okay? Um, again, when you look at these properties, it's nice to always map out space because anywhere you can add value, adding another bedroom, is just, it just throws the numbers in a whole other category, which is really what's key as from an investor standpoint and the amount of rent you can collect. So what we did was we actually brought in an engineer and we found a way then to put in a staircase here that would allow us to go upstairs. So we were able to create a third bedroom. So this house is a three bedroom unit on the main floor. Now does that count as plus one or is that like a legal bedroom? That's a legal bedroom. That's really, so it's okay. It's a legal bedroom. Do you know why I love this exposed brick? Yeah. Like I didn't even know that this was something behind the walls when I first came in, but it's such a smart idea. I think your contractor thought of that, right? Actually, no, I mean, it's, uh, I'll take that one. I'll take credit oh, yeah. for that one. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> and, so anytime my contractors know that if I know that there's brick somewhere in that house, we have to expose it. Mm -hmm. um, so we found the brick um, and of course we exposed it. There was a chimney, we removed the chimney um, just because the potential for leaks, we didn't need one anymore. You just capped it? Uh, we removed, took it off altogether. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this, the brick in the houses we have here, we have some in the basement as well. Wow. That's it. No, um, that's yeah, the, tr you're trying to remember here, the kitchen was just, I mean, you'll see in the pictures yeah. is. It was non-existent. There was no kitchen essentially, it right? Horrible. It was like half that or something like that. It's bad, yeah. I think and then. So yeah, we put a whole new cabinet here. We put new, uh, yeah, all new plumbing. We put uh, backsplashes, uh, backsplashes, a backsplash stove. Um, and of course I have a fridge coming in this week. Nice. Yeah, and then yeah, just did custom countertops. And of course, just a, a nice taste. I mean, the thing is you don't have to go extravagant with, with rentals. Uh, I think a lot of people maybe get ahead of themselves and are like, oh, you know, it's like HGTV. I need to put the quartz, right? You gotta put the granite countertop. I'm fortunate that with my contractors, they understand the areas I'm investing in and they keep on reminding me, you wanna do this, but how much more rent are you gonna get back? Mm -hmm. The market rent dictates market rent. 
right? I could have gold plated floors. It's not gonna impact the rent. Market rent is gonna be the market rent. Also with the home value, it's all based on the appraisal and, and this area. So it's very uh, important to, to stay within those lines, knowing the area you're in. No, absolutely. Yeah. Now, when you, so you obviously like made sure that you did a very good job. I'd say this is like mid finishes, mid to high, yeah? Yeah, I'd say they're mid finishes. They're, yeah. they're mid finishes. So like, were you gonna get the maximum amount of rent with just these finishes? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Because I, because I own a bunch of properties just down the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the nice thing is I'm already able to know what the market is and control what the market rents are in the area. Just because, I mean, I got one, two, three, three properties within walking distance to here. Okay. So this property itself, I mean, I mean, compared to my other properties, this property itself, the main level, uh, including upstairs is going to be rented for 1900 a month. 1900 plus utilities. Plus utilities. Plus utilities. This is Old East Village area mm -hmm. and it's un unheard of, but my property is just down the street. I'm getting what? 1750. Yeah. And that was a year ago. So I'm able to pivot that. So I always like to set my rents higher uh, for multiple reasons. Number one is it weeds out the riffraff. Yeah, bad, yeah, bad tenants. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is that the bank likes to see higher rents when I want to go refi. Mm -hmm. And number three is when I do the refinance on this property, it's going to cut into my cash flow. So it's nice having that extra reserve on there that I can count on. No, 100%. So I really factor in those rents. I'm okay waiting, having a, a property with no tenant in there for two, three months to get that right tenant with the right price, hands down. No, I love it. And this is a very good location too, because Fanshawe College is right there. Fanshawe is five minutes drive. So you have a pool of tenants that you can actually attract. That's right. So 1900 on top, so that includes the one room. Yeah. Now I guess we'll talk about the basement after, but let's take sure. a look upstairs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's go. I love that there's so much storage. Yeah, we, we wanted to maximize that. So we put a pantry there as well. So these are the stairs that we, we got installed uh, with the engineers and so forth. And this is a whole other area, which is really nice. And uh, wow. turn amazing. Wow. So we put a new window in there. This was nothing. No. This was an addict. Yeah, this was nothing for sure. Wow. Yeah. So created a bedroom space in here, nice LED lighting, new window, meets the requirements for sure. Um, so this is ideal, um, whether you're a college student, you have children or what have you. Um, and then what we did was to maximize the space um, is you can walk, we actually got a walk-in closet here. Okay. Oh, this is great. And then, um, and then it actually angles in the back there for more storage. Because again, storage is always gonna be an issue with property, so. You guys put a lot of pot lights, eh? Oh yeah. That's amazing. Wow. This is efficient use of space, man. Yeah, this you is have crazy. To use the space, absolutely. Mm hmm No, oh, I love it. And you insulated everything? Absolutely. That's why it's warm in here right now. Absolutely. Yeah. No, there's no we don't take shortcuts with any of that kind of stuff. You shouldn't be taking shortcuts mm -hmm. with that, because you know what comes back to bite you in the ass anyways, and it right. actually costs more later on. So Wow. Yeah. And that was the only window you had to replace? Uh, well, this one, and then we had a, we had a break in, so we covered that one. We could talk about that one. And then um, we're in the process of actually getting all the basement windows replaced as well, just from an energy efficiency standpoint. No, that's nice. Did you touch the roof at all or no? Uh, the roof, we didn't have to. That was the only thing that we didn't have to do, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. No, that's nice. So, how much did this cost you alone? Because. You know what? It's tough to say. Um, I mean, the carpets itself were. The carpet itself was about sixteen hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. The staircase was about sixteen hundred bucks, and then everything else is all encompassing. So I'd say probably five, six grand. Five, six grand. Yeah, let's just say six grand. So that's six grand to put into a, what was a two-bedroom, one-bathroom house has now changed the the, the landscape yeah. of where this property can sit with a comparable. So now that $6,000 can probably garner another $50,000.
No, that's great, man. That's great. Yeah. You actually added so much value just be, by having this room. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a huge, especially in the London, Ontario market, like a two bedroom is a, totally in a different spectrum than a three bedroom mm -hmm. in terms of the price. Absolutely. So I'm so glad that you added this and utilized the space. Because mm -hmm. when I when I initially came to this property, I was like, whoa, this, this, this is going to need a lot of work. It's going to need a sophisticated investor, right? And I happened to meet 7-2 over here, which actually took on the project. Now, was this the largest project you've done or? No. I've actually had other ones that uh, have been, you know, probably just as large. Okay. Um, so it, it, I wasn't sure if I'll buy it at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I think it's nice when you can come in to and look at, you know, you come in with them a different vision and see, okay, what can we do here? Um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, as an investor, the numbers have to make sense. Yeah. The property could be perfect, but the numbers don't make sense. They don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And the numbers just made sense here. No, I love it, man. So before we actually go, I'll check out the basement. Let's check out the bedrooms over here and the bathroom. So actually, before we even head there, I mean, we've yep. created more storage. Again, you, storage is, par is paramount, right? So this can serve as two options, either storage, or if one day I want to pivot, I can actually put a washer, dryer, those, those European style all in one with a decondenser, and I could put that in here. So then it, once I develop the basement, then actually have their own separate washer and dryer. So again, just by doing that, having someone having their own washer and dryer could probably give you an extra hundred bucks a month in rent. Yeah, yeah. Right, so good value add. Absolutely. All right. Let's. Oh my God! I remember this room. Yeah, that was the pink. This is the pink room. That was the pink room. Yeah. So. That window was actually spray painted. The right? Whole room actually the was. whole room was actually pink and I was actually scraping. If you go in the previous video when I did with uh, Mark, you'll see that I was actually scraping the paint off and it wasn't working, but I was trying my best, you know? But no, it's actually great. It's, I love the feel that it's like old century, but it has a new modern taste to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like the finishes that you do, especially those fixtures, man, it's nice. I just love history and I love, you know, these walls could talk, right? Um, so just trying to, you know, keep the, like these doors, for example, like you can see the key on here, like I could have easily gone and gotten a new door, but my thing was no, how do I, how do I protect this? And we actually had to go to a specialty person to get the, the door handles, right? So normally I would probably keep brush nick or something more modern, but I'm like, I want to keep this. That's a story to tell. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, so. And then um, in this bath, uh, this bedroom right here, same thing. So we, you know, we updated the LED lighting, two LED lighting, again, all knob and tube, right? So we removed all that. Nice high wow. ceilings. We kept the original uh, baseboards. Wow. Did this room have mold in it? Uh, this one I had, uh, this one did have a little bit of mold in it, right? A little bit, right? Because I remember, I think, yeah, it was either this one or that one, but yeah. yeah. These are nice, decent sized rooms. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then I remember this bathroom. Oh my God. Yeah, this bathroom was a, uh, a nightmare. So when I say a nightmare, uh, not from a lot of work, but that toilet was not flush for two years. And uh, yeah, it was nasty. So we did, we removed everything out. Got, of course, uh, new vanity in there. Put some new lighting in there. Uh, Recoat of paint. You know, we were toying with that, with that tub because the issue with that tub is you know, you want to sometimes get rid of it, you know, go to newer. But I said to myself, if we're trying to keep that character of the home, let's keep that tub. Mm -hmm. um, and we can always pivot if we need to in the future. Because for me to put a new tub in there, get, you know, all the, uh, all the tile placed and that kind of stuff, just going to be an added cost. So, but everybody that's come in and seen it, they just love the idea. So we just simply repainted it and uh, it was in great condition. I love the touches, man. It's a good idea that you kept it. And it's another closet. We've got a closet here as well. Got a closet in the back. More storage. More storage. Oh, I love it. All right. It's time for the basement now. Let's go. Do you want to get control of your financial life? Do you want to crush it in real estate with wholesaling? Do you want to join my full-time team of wholesalers like Mike? Or Shahir? Or what about Tyler? Or Diego? Or what about Amar? All right, and what do we do, boys? We make offers, we buy fast. Never gonna miss a deal, cause we pay cash. Offers, 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 deals, deals, deals. Tell us, Mr. Seller, what price do you feel? Cause we're Southwestern's biggest source of deals. Boom. So if you guys wanna crush it with wholesaling, you need to join my team. And down below, video description, there's all the links you need. It's time for the basement now. Let's go. Whoa. Look at this. This is 
beauty in the making. Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, completely different than when I first, uh, when you had first seen it. So in here, um, the previous tenants in here before it was vacant, um, mold everywhere. It was just absolutely disgusting. They were raising pit bulls. They were doing dog fighting in here. It was just disgusting. It was just disgusting. And uh, so we just said, hey, you know what? Let's just gut everything. Um, mind you, this property we purchased pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So we had to pivot along the way. Prior to COVID, the plan was to go, you know, all balls out and get this all done. But we just had to make some small pivots, right? And that's what we've done. And I'm excited by that. So, um, so in here, like where you're standing right there. So what the plan would be then is because of the way the space is, we have a washer and dryer that's gonna go in there and then we have a utility room. So what we're gonna have to do is actually put a separate door right here so they can enter this unit right here. And then you have a doorway that goes in, here, in through here for your washer and dryer and uh, they're still cleaning up in here. And then we actually wanna create a separate door right here because this is where the magic happens. So this is our, our new boiler system. Um, that's actually the hot water tank, believe it or not, that's the hot water tank right there. And it's actually a, um, uh, it's on demand hot water as well, okay? So you could see just the way they run all the, all the lines. It, this thing's ready to go, right? Um, but we, last thing I want is my tenants in the basement having issue with the guys upstairs and adjusting their heat. Mm -hmm. It does happen. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put a, another door here that's gonna be a key access. I love it. Look how beautiful this looks. It looks so elegant with all the piping. I have never seen anyone do such a good job with this. Wow. Shout out to your contractor. For sure. No, very clean very clean. So. Quick note guys, when I actually first walked through this property, like the basement was the worst thing ever because the smell of just like, it was like baby pit bulls, right? Like placenta, it was, it was like a placenta smell almost where it was just disgusting, it was wet. And I can't imagine like you ripping everything out to the studs. Like if you look over here, like you could still see some of the moisture. Is this some of the moisture that's still left out? Uh, no, it's just muggy down here. I think that's just from stains, yeah. So, uh, you know, with all due respect, I don't know what a, a placenta, scent, placenta smells yeah, like. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but like, it was like, like I, I don't know either, but if I had to guess, I'd guess that. <laughs> if you remember, there was a bulkhead that came quite low here yeah there was a bulkhead that came quite low and you had all this piping that was actually coming and it was actually uh, surrounded with asbestos oh yes I forgot about that there was asbestos in there so we actually had to bring in the bring in the, the hard guns and remove all that safely so to give us that ceiling height that we needed right so we were able to take care of that really wanted to remove everything from the ceilings and you can see how well organized it is like the way the lines come across on this side here um yeah these guys did a fantastic job so so essentially what the goal would then be is if we do have a door right here is you would actually have a bedroom in this corner right here because we have a window okay bathroom so we got you know rough end toilet and yep. uh in sink and uh stand-up shower if we need to we can also put a tub if we wanted to as well probably put another door right here, okay? And then this would be the next bedroom right here. And then the plan then would be is, uh, this area would be the kitchen, okay? Um, yeah, we got? Got a window here, mm -hmm. okay? So definitely be a window right here. And then this area right here would then be the living space. So we do have another window there. Wow. No, this is great. And especially if you come here, you, you, you can see the tools that we were talking about that were left here. You guys don't wanna know what that is, but if you do, comment down below what do you think that is. Just, just take an up close personal look, Pete. Look, look at that. Comment down below what you think that is. It's actually endorsed by the America's Pumpers Association, so. Mm -hmm. No, I love it. And especially with this window, obviously it's been blocked up right now because I feel like the swatters came through here. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna have all that taken care of. I yeah. see a brand new electrical panel back That's there. That's the new panel, yeah. Mm. Let's take a look at that beauty. Oh, wow. So it's ready for the future, yeah. So we just got the inspection done uh, on Monday. Wow. There we go. Did, did you get this uh, property appraised yet? No. No, okay. Not yet. No, and, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, I could do it for interest sake. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to until the dust settles a little bit more. Um, because I have a VTB on this, mm -hmm. so I have a VTB on this, and then I have, uh, I have a, a private lender that, that, um, that floated me for the renovations. 
So right now, even at that rent of $1,900, based on those two private loans, so to speak, I mean, I'm still cash flowing a little bit. It's not gonna make or break me, um, but uh, it's, it's more of the futures I'm excited about once we get this place refinanced and I get a mortgage on it. Yeah. Because right, I, bought, I bought this property for $200,000. And that included the twenty thousand dollar wholesale fee. Yeah. This property itself, I believe, uh, will be as a single family home. Uh, would probably fetch about three hundred, three ten. So you're all in, let's just say two hundred sixty five thousand yeah. dollars, including the rentals. Yeah. Appraisal value for this, let's say three ten. Three ten. Three ten conservatively, yeah. and then wow, and the rents. That that exceeds the one percent really. Well, you put absolutely. I mean, as soon as I mean, I'm getting nineteen hundred. You know, and then downstairs of those thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah. So I'm definitely planning on getting the basement tenanted, mm -hmm. and and after it's all done. But hey, you know what? The key thing is, is this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. So let the tenants in here. They're they're professionals that are moving in here, not professional tenants, thank God, but professional professional human beings. Right. <laughs> and uh, and so they'll probably be here for about a year. At the end of the day, we do really want to make a win-win situation happen, and I feel like this this was my first wholesale deal, so just like seeing the entire process from mm -hmm. stage one to stage 10, is, it's, it's, it's amazing, especially having a partner like you. It's, it's amazing, man, so. Well, you know, we're not in a real estate game. We're in a relationship, relationship game. game 100%. This is a relationship game. This is all this is a relationship business mm -hmm. to a point where even the person I've got the VTB from, the owner of this property, um, I actually brought him and his wife over because um, this property created a lot of friction for them. Mm -hmm. It was a real sore point for them, the older couple, right. and brought them in and uh, yeah, she was smiling the whole way through. She just loved what we've done at the place. And again, it's just to foster those relationships. So guys, for those who don't know, last week, I believe it was last week. It was, uh, when was it? It was last week, yeah, because I was supposed to get on a call with, uh, with uh, a couple of my mentors and uh, yeah, I was, I was actually, my contractor contacted me mm -hmm. and said, you better come here. And, and you know what? And before you do that, I want you to sit down while I'm ta talking to you. And I thought, sit down, like and another unexpected cost at one of the flips. Like, did we find something with another surprise? I'm like, just right. throw it at me. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, no, make sure you're sitting down. I'm like, just go ahead, tell him what is it? And he goes, the bomb squad's been deployed. I'm like, okay, for which property? He goes, this property. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And he goes, well, we actually found a artillery shell. They thought it was a, a tank shell, live. And uh, so yeah, of course, the police were called, the police were dispatched. They contacted the bomb squad. The bomb squad, because of the vintage of this, of this artillery shell, they actually had to send pictures to the military base to get their counsel on it. Really? Um, yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, this property's had it all. That's it. This property was a bomb, guys. If you ever want to come with bomb deals, approach me. I, I, I get all the bomb deals. So now we're gonna take a look at the backyard. Most specifically, there was a tree in that location. If you actually look over here, it's been cut. Yeah. How much did that cost? Three grand. Three grand. Just to cut a freaking tree. Yeah, that tree, you can see the stump there, and it actually was pushing into the gate, pushing into the deck, and it was over the house. And it was just a major risk and uh, it had to go. Um, and it was a pain in the ass because we couldn't get access from the street. Unfortunately, the neighbors allowed the, you know, the trucks to get in here and do what they got to do. Um, interesting though, because it happened during COVID and of course during COVID, you know, you had to get a, a permit to do that. And uh, the person said, yeah, I went by the property and it's fine. They, I think it has to be like 50 centimeters, like chest height. And they said, yeah, you don't need one. I'm like, I'm not gonna argue with you guys. I have it in writing wow. and we got rid of it. So, so we got that and in, in the back, like in just with, that was three grand and then we have our walkway right here. So this was full of just shrubs and this kind of stuff. So having the crew in there cleaning all this out, which is nice. So uh, a back entry of course. And then, you know, the backyard was full of garbage too. So the guys are here taking down some trees um, and some more garbage. So really at the end of the day, this is uh, with the tree and then all the stuff with the yard, it's another uh, probably about six grand total, but it's required. It's a beautiful backyard. I mean, you know, nice to sit out here, have a fire. Um, yeah, this all be cleaned up and look nice. Uh, so my tenants are moving here on the, uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. All be done for them. They're excited to get in here as well. So that's that. Sweet, let's take a look at the garage. I don't think we really 
Saw that. You can tell me where the bomb was. Yeah, exactly. Oh, watch That's yourself. There we go. So slowly things are being moved out here, uh, but uh, essentially that artillery shell was hiding in the corner here. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and then this, this is actually has its own power source as well. Of course, breaker's probably off. So it's nice if someone wants to work in their shop, store things. Are you renting this out or? So with, with the property itself. The property itself? Yeah, for added sure. Value. Yeah, added value. Right. I mean, cause this property, I, you know, 1800, but I said 1900 with the garage. Yeah, not smart. Yep. If you were to rate this project from one to 10, uh, obviously you had previous experience with renovations, like what would you rate this at? Uh, in, in what terms? In terms of like uh, the difficulty of the project. Difficulty of project, actually, it wasn't bad at all. Um, it was just, there was just a lot we had to do. Yeah, um, yeah you know what? Uh, it, it's tough to gauge if a project is difficult. Uh, it just, it's more work and yeah. more, more of a time horizon. So this one here, I would say, from a difficulty standpoint, time horizon with the curveballs that were thrown at us, um, this would probably be sitting, if 10 was like the most painful, the most painful. <laughs> most painful I'd say this was probably sitting at a five or six. Wow, that's yeah. not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Well, thank you so much, Mark. No problem. For having out. I know it's COVID-19, but yeah. <laughs> it's all good, you're my brother. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this property, leave them in the comments down below. I'm gonna be in the comments section replying to all your comments, as well as Mark Smith over here. Mark, where, where can they catch you? Uh, where can't they catch me, right? Oh, yeah. I'm everywhere apparently. So yeah, you can either catch me on Facebook, Mark Smith, uh, Instagram at the 72 Real Estate Investor. I have my own YouTube channel. I have a podcast, the 72 Real Estate Investor. I can be found. Perfect. And obviously guys, my name is Shahir Shahid. You can find me on Instagram at sheer.ethic. And again, until next time guys, have a great day. Take care. Thanks again to Shahir and Mark for shooting this video. I'm really glad that we were able to catch up and check in on the progress of this project. And even though Mark's got some pretty crazy stories about this property, I'm glad that things look like they're still gonna all work out well for the 7-2 investor. If you guys missed part one, check it out right here. Otherwise, if you just want more great real estate videos, check out this playlist right here. We'll see you guys in the next video, but before you leave, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new, my channel and I'll see you next time.